I'm working on a game about exploration in a high fantasy universe. And I'm a programmer, so I can't actually draw. I need to turn this awful looking user interface into something that uh, looks a little bit better. And the machines are here to help me do that. Oh yes, that's right. Hours of work, hundreds of generated images, and one brand new graphics card later. This week, I properly investigated AI for content production. And I do sort of think it might change everything. This video, I'm gonna show you how I got started with Stable Diffusion, and also how I made my first AI inspired piece of content for this game. And it's all based around incredibly creative prompts. Cat by window. So the backstory is this. Someone who had been investigating AI pointed out in my Discord that it might be useful for generating inspiration for assets similar to what I did last week. Having shared some examples of what could be made and also based on the fact that I kind of wanted to get involved with AI at some point anyway, I decided to follow his advice. This led me to a GitHub project called Focus. Extra ooh for making you go Ooh. It's based on Stable Diffusion, which is open source and so good it has a Wikipedia page. Just give it a prompt and it will generate you an image, or so they say at least. Unfortunately support for AMD graphics drivers is in beta and also that happened to be the platform I was using. While it's extremely buggy and I did have to wait a few hours for it to actually work, I managed to get it to produce my first ever piece of AI content. Let's try in Linux, because Linux is better. Oh, it actually worked. Oh, nice. I'm pleased with that. So now, even though I had a system that could produce pictures, it was incredibly slow and also quite unreliable. I tried it on a different operating system, but unfortunately the problem really was just the AMD GPU. I feel like this guy's on my Discord somewhere. Okay, so I've gone off and bought a new graphics card. I didn't really expect I'd be doing that this week. Basically, I needed a NVIDIA card. I've now obtained a NVIDIA card, so... Oh, uh, there she is, boys. Box under the box. Da -da -da -da. That didn't work out how I thought it would. <gasps> oh, oh, it's much quicker. Oh, hooray. Yes. <laughs> they grow so fast. See, I reckon I could show that to a friend and they wouldn't know it's a like, fake cat. What's next? Oh, I need to think of something creative now. That is one heck of a doogie. Oh, this is exciting. I'm glad I'm not paying for my electricity because it's included with the rent. So there is a low poly one. Yes. What the hell? Why have I got so many crabs? But again, like as a piece of reference material, it's good. That is indeed a low poly crab. I mean, that's just very useful. Fantasy sword. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a good design, isn't it? Oh, this is amazing. Crystal sword. <laughs> Jesse, we need to cook. I can't do his voice, can I? Look, they're not bad designs necessarily. It's just that they don't really fit the brief. Bone sword. Oh, that's really cool. I'm just assuming that they might pop out of like forests or something like that. And just... Here's like the regular wolf. You know, he listens to Coldplay and that sort of thing. And then here's Mr. Bad Boy Wolf. Stands on two legs, large paws. Yeah, well, he doesn't stand on two legs, does he? So, werewolf. Oh, there we go. See, that's more like it. That's what I expect. I think there's probably just a skill in knowing what to tell it because it probably thinks, well, a wolf can't stand on two legs, so therefore the wolf will not stand on two legs. I then spent a bit of time trying to generate a few different types of enemies. And I also experimented with different ideas for humanoid enemies, for instance, in different cities or towns. This was good because I could try generating the same prompt in different styles and actually merging different styles became quite useful later on. But one of the things I really needed to think about was icons for the game. I don't think that's... What, what is this? What is this? Uh, generally, it, like, it looks so good. It's flipping amazing. I hope none of you in this audience are looking to do graphic design for a living, because I'm just saying FYI, you might want to find a new job soon. Because I could probably do um, skin for user interface, colourful. Uh, I should probably spell it the American way, just because I bet the model doesn't understand how British people work. Oh, oh, oh it's actually doing it. Yes, this is looking good. So you can see immediately there's a bit of a design, there's an outline thing. It's li literally fantastic. This is just what I need. It's literally so good. It's so good. Like, look at the detail. Uh, this one's not so good. The neither is this one. See, that's a nice little house. I don't know what these are. Like, wh what are these things? Oh god, does it only know how to do anime waifus? Uh, look, it literally does. <laughs> oh! Like, there's no way that the AI just understands how to do all this. Someone, someone drew this originally. The machines are literally coming for our jobs. Now, in order for these generated images to be of any use in the game, ideally they would be in a vector format. But it turns out there are actually a number of tools that could convert bitmaps to vectors. Probably take forever. Oh, that's useful. Okay, what's the catch? Yeah. 
Like this is Adobe, they're not exactly generous people. That's actually not bad. Finding the edges, yeah, you do that. Mixing art and science, oh god, they look awful. Oh, this looks dreadful. It was actually surprisingly difficult to get certain outputs to vectorize properly, but honestly, the AI upscaler worked well enough that I might just be able to use that to get higher resolution pieces of art anyway. I've been pretty positive about everything, but genuinely, like, it does produce really good results. Like, this is just a good looking sword. It looks good, but to an untrained eye, like, I can immediately see that there's just some weirdness to it. Like, what is this exactly? Like, everything when you zoom in just looks a bit odd. You know, everything kind of has this detail when you're getting close. I spent quite a while playing around with this tool, but Having seen what it can do, I'm absolutely certain that I'll be using it for many projects going forwards and I just think it's going to change so many things. This genuinely is so exciting though because artwork is a major part of game development that I now won't have to learn how to do. So this will save me lots of time in the long run. This channel is really about me learning how to do new things so there will definitely be some weeks where I do nothing but learn something new, but I hope you can take some use from that. Anyway, now it's time to talk about the piece of content I added to the game using this inspiration workflow. I started off with coming up with some ideas for what I'd like to add. Probably a few of these can end up in the game anyway. Werewolf, I'd like to have a mechanic where people actually turn into werewolves, that would be interesting. Goblin Mage would be quite an interesting one, but it's also quite similar to the goblins already have. In theory, they would just have a staff and that would be it. So what I'm thinking is doing some sort of forest guardian. They would spawn within forest areas. If you destroy the trees, which you can actually do in this game, then the guardian of the forest would come out and start attacking you. I think that would be a really cool mechanic. So I've kind of had a bit of a, well, initial prompt of what that might look like. What I'd be thinking is large body with two arms so the same as how the goblin looks where it doesn't have a separate head it just has a body um, and then it would probably have say some sort of horn so I think I want to go hard on the horns because horns would translate quite well to voxel and it would have some sort of moose face as well large ant lures this is literally just a blue deer that just looks stupid I mean that's just a bear with antlers that's also blue it turned out really the hardest part of all this was just getting the model to understand your prompt. Come on, he stands on two legs. Now he just has two legs. Yeah, and he's not wielding the battle axe. Yeah, he looks kind of stupid. <laughs> no! No! What am I looking at? Look at this guy. He doesn't look threatening at all. I did end up with way more pictures of strange blue muscular men than I would have liked, but eventually I started to get somewhere. Oh, here we go. Here we go. That's more like it. This is the sort of thing I want. Yes, this is more like it. The skill is definitely in knowing what to say to it. And I don't think I want him being too jacked because he's very jacked at the moment. This sort of curvitude won't make it well into a voxel game. <laughs> I do think I still want to go for the kind of blue and purple look. I was now developing a pretty good understanding of the creature and I began to write up some lore to help describe it a bit better. For instance, one of the things I decided was that these creatures are grown from seeds. So I tried to incorporate some foliage into the design. That was another good one, actually. I also need to think which one's going to be the standout one that goes on the thumbnail. Realistically, it'll probably be him at this point. With that decided, I used the AI upscaler to give me a higher resolution version of that image. Like, the upscalings work quite well. I think things like this, like this didn't make any sense, and now it's been fixed. I also wanted to play around with trying to get the character to stand from a different angle, but I've had no luck with that so far, so I'll figure that out later on. Finally, I entered the creature design into my locally hosted wiki so I could keep track of its characteristics. Honestly, I was pretty pleased with it, so then I just had to add it into the game. Unfortunately though, this took me until Thursday to actually finish. So the only thing really I've got left to do this week is actually <laughs> make the creature. So as usual, I started by trying to get all the basic shapes into place. The Marshmallow Man. He's arrived. I gradually realised I needed to focus on improving my voxel modelling skills. This isn't the sort of thing I can automate with artificial intelligence, unfortunately. There isn't really that much content in this game at the moment, so that really just means that the pipeline for actually creating stuff isn't as good as it could be, but I think every time I make something it gradually improves. This is actually quite an interesting one to sketch out. I did change my opinion of whether the head would be attached to the body in the end. You can see there I made a separate head for it. But I think in future it would make sense if some of the enemies actually were able to turn their heads and things like that. So, because there won't really be that many of them on the screen anyway, so any optimization I would have by having a head and body merged probably would just disappear. I did quite struggle with the body to be honest. I think in the picture itself you can see he's quite sort of well built. But the emphasis is really on the things like the legs. Now, of course, in this art style, I don't really have that much of an emphasis on the legs. So he just ended up kind of looking a bit like a floating nugget. 
I will likely come back to this enemy anyway at some point and just improve it slightly, but for now it's fine. I uh, seem to say that quite a lot. There we go. Oh. Once it's properly textured and everything. So actually putting the colors in for this enemy, I think I did struggle with a bit. Maybe it's my lack of skills or experience, but also I think I just have a limited color palette. So I'm quite restricted in what I can make really. A big part of my problem is I only have 256 colors to actually make it look good, which is not that many when you actually get down to it. So like the brown doesn't really fit but it's also the best brown that does fit. I think there are things that can be done to it. So number one, it needs ambient occlusion. That's a big deal. They, they don't go through the voxelizer, which is what adds the ambient occlusion. There are ways that I could sort that out, but they're all kind of complicated. You know, there's all sorts of options I could do in the shader. Like I could add some slight color variations to things, like maybe just add some noise to the top of it. Adding noise to the top of it might help out quite significantly. You know, every, everything is just a matter of taking small steps each day. There's an entire new enemy. Uh, I think I'm happy with it in that regard. To be honest, I've run out of time this weekend. <laughs> anyway, I've got quite a lot done, actually. A whole, whole lot done. So that's where I'm gonna leave it off for this video. Now, I'd like to apologize first and foremost for it being a bit delayed. It is still meant to be a weekly show. The issue is that at the moment, surprise, I'm actually working on sort of like a new recording area, which has been taking quite a significant amount of my time. To me, it's a worthwhile time investment because it really will be the next thing that levels up this content. And I'd like to get into a better weekly schedule anyway. I've also started implementing save support for the inventory screen. That was something that was kind of missed from the last alpha. It's getting there, but it turned out that there was a bunch of other boilerplate code I had to write in order to get that to work. So it just took longer than I thought it would. Wow, when have I ever had to deal with that before? All right, see ya. Guys, check this blister out.